Kim from Mosaic Tiles Australia and today we're going to do a quick routing tutorial just to show you how easy and how it doesn't have to be so messy. So first of all I've got my beautiful mosaic just finished. This is a new um, tutorial that we've got for a dragonfly kit set. So there is a tutorial up shortly which will show you how we've made this. So we're going to do this one in black. I've got a little bit of black brush in here. So I'm just making a wee well in the middle <laughs> just to uh, for my water. So add a little bit of water at a time. I'm just using room temperature water. So just mix thoroughly. You want to achieve the consistency of a toothpaste mix or peanut butter or just that sort of um, icing mix. It's always really good and don't be tempted to lick the spoon. Because that wouldn't be good. Right, so just add a little bit of water at a time because you want to get the nice consistency and not make it too runny where you've got no grout left to thicken it up. So it's always a good idea to leave a little bit of grout in the bag on the side just in case you have overmixed it. You can always add a bit more dry powder to it. Right, so this here is about the consistency that we want to achieve. And as you can see, when I pick it up with my spoon, it doesn't slop off. Okay, so when you're grouting, never grout outside in the sun, always grout in the shade um, and wear gloves for obvious reasons. <laughs> right, I'm going to let that sit for about five minutes, then I'll re stir it. So, in that time, I'm going to cut myself a little spatula. I don't worry about using a rubber squeegee because you can just as easy create your own, which you can throw out afterwards. So, I've just got a soft plastic container. This one here, I think it's a you know, light and easy food container. So as long as it's clean, it's nice and flexible. So now I'm just going to cut myself out a little spatula. Easy as that. Just sort of round the edges off. Perfect. And that's going to be what I'm going to use to spread my grout on. And when I'm finished, I just throw it out. Right, we stir. So I might just add a tiny bit of water, it's just thickened up a wee bit while it was sitting. So that is pretty good. Right, so I usually just work in a section at a time, so I'm going to start up this end. Some people ask me how much grout do you know to mix up or what's the quantity I probably just start off doing a little bit at a time because when I grout I don't like to cake my grout all over the project I usually work in a section at a time that way it can just be a lot tidier and then you can control like if you need to see if there's any tiles that have come out or loose it's just a bit easier oh, seeing how these wings are going to turn out actually So it's just gently backwards and forwards. Oh, some ice cream there. So usually I will go over the top and then I usually clean off a little bit and I work it back to the edges. So once I've covered the top of the mosaic, I usually like to just get down the sides of it as well. So if you are doing a outside project, you need to use, or it's a good idea to use a grout additive into your grout. Now there's so many um, brands on the market. I usually use um, one called, it's a Davco 4-in-1 additive. Basically the process of that is the same as what I've done now, but when you go to mix up your grout, um, you add a cap full of additive and a cap full of water and just keep doing that to you get your consistency of the grout and that just helps to strengthen the grout and also helps it to prevent it going mouldy if you get any mould spots on your grout um, and just really um, helps to waterproof the grout as well so it's just a good habit to get into doing Right, so now I've kind of almost done half of it. What I'm going to do is just tidy this up a wee bit. There's nothing worse than having to feel like you've got to work really fast if it's drying. So if I'm just working in this area at a time, so now I'm just brushing my fingers over it gently. 
just moving any excess grout. So this helps make it a lot cleaner and tidier when you're taking your grout off in the end. And that way you can check if you've missed any gaps. And this is just pushing the grout, excess grout over. Make sure you get down the sides. So always double check the sides. So now I'm just checking for gaps. can see but it's sort of starting to dry a little bit hazy up here so that tells you that it's starting to set quite nicely but there's no need for a rush as I said just make sure you um, remove any excess grout which I'm doing now I'm pushing it over to this half um, also if it does dry too fast for your liking you can always just lay a wet um, cloth over a damp cloth just to keep it moisture while you're ready to clean it off see how it's drying nicely here and that's the way I like to have it looking like that so it's less grout to have to clean off otherwise you're just clogging up your rag with excess grout. So as you can see I've basically just moved all my excess over to this side. Keeping an eye on it so it's not drying too far so this is still okay. Right, well, hey, a few people ask me how do you decide what colour to grout so it's always a real tricky one. Um, sometimes what we do is, if we're unsure, we will put in a um, just a sprinkle of dry powder, whether it be white or black, grey, you can get so many different colours. Um, and sometimes just putting a sprinkling in, just sort of wiping it down, make sure you don't get any water with it. But then you can sort of stand back and get an idea of what colour looks nice, and then you can just flip it over and brush it out or vacuum it out. That's always a good way of just sort of seeing what colour you think would look nicer. Generally, I don't do dark colors on a white background so if I've got um, for example if I'm doing a background and it's white and say it's a house and my left is black I would usually do the background white only because I find if you are doing a dark grout on a really light light tile it's going to show up every single cut that you've made sometimes it can look quite messy so example if you're doing a house number for example house number is black I would make sure you grout that in black because that's what you want to pop out if the background's a light colour, I would do it in a light grout. That way, if you did it in a black grout, all you're going to see are these tiny little cuts and everything's going to really show up and it's going to deter your eye from the actual house number. So the reason why I'm doing the wings in black is because I want also to make that look like the veins of the wings. So sometimes it can work in your favour if you want to have that sort of look. So I'm kind of relying on the black, on the white, to really define the wings. So we'll see. Might look terrible I don't think so <laughs> but yeah so just it's, it's a tough one but dry dry sprinkle is the, is the best way um, and people talk about colouring grout with acrylic paint and etc etc you know it's you've got to remember grout's grout and if you start putting lots of acrylic paint into your grout sometimes you might start off putting a little bit of acrylic paint in and you can't quite get the right colour then you add a bit more paint and in the end, it's not really grout. You're really compromising your grout. So what I usually do is I use Inca Gold to color my grouts a lot, which is the product that we have. It's a nice color range. Um, and I, I generally have quite tight gaps in my work. It's just the way that I like to, how I like to work. I rely on the color of my tiles to, to be the color of the project, not having big wide lines of grout that I find can take your eye away from your project. But everybody is different, so you know, if you like having the bigger lines, that's, that's your choice. Um, so getting back to acrylic paint, yeah, if you're going to use it, use it sparingly and try and buy a good quality one. You can get proper oxides, um, but as I said, I generally rely on the colour of my tiles that I use to make my work pop. I don't like having big gaps. Um, yeah, but um, Check out all the oxide colours you can get if you want to go down that track. Right, this has been nice, starting to dry off nicely. Just see how it's just nicely crumbling off a little bit there. So we'll spit a little bit more on these wings, and then what I'm going to do is I'll probably let it sit for about five minutes. Once I just give it another tidy up on this side, uh, and then I'll wipe it off slowly with a damp cloth. Um, I don't use a sponge. Same thing again, personal choice. I just prefer to use a slightly damp cloth. I find for me, sometimes the sponges can just drag out your grout or they're too wet, they hold a lot of water, but yeah. 
see what works for you. Find your, find your groove. <laughs> And let me just check the sides. Okay, so I've let it sit for about five minutes. As you can see here, just see how it's slightly drying, which is actually quite nice. So now I'm just going to get a an old cloth, an old t-shirt, <laughs> just to put the price on. <laughs> Good old second hand. <laughs> so I'm using just a nice soft cloth. Right, so I usually like to fold mine into a sort of a square, but so it's got a nice flat surface, which makes it nice and easy to clean off. So have it like that there. Um, I only really just have a couple of drops of water because I do kind of tidy grouting. I find you don't need to have a whole lot of water. If you sort of done a nice tidy clean off as you've worked it just makes it so much easier to do so as you can see I don't have a whole of a grout part on top of my work it only needs to go into the gaps that's all it needs to go it doesn't need to cover your whole entire project as long as the gaps you've got grout in them right I'm just gonna slowly in a circular motion just rub a little bit gently on here and you'll see it's taking off the surface grout that's sitting on top it's all you need to do I'm dying to see how these things are going to turn out. So this is all you're doing. That little bit of water on your cloth is just enough moisture to help soften the surface wrap that needs to come off. And to me, that's pretty good. So see how it's just smearing and smearing and smearing. So. I would probably just leave this now, make sure that I've got the grout off, and I'll go back to it probably in 20 minutes and give it a buff up, because the more I'm wiping, it's just smearing, so I'm not really achieving anything, but I'm making sure that there's no grout stuck on top. Um, and around here, I use Q-tips, just to sort of fish out if any grout build up, because with this one here, the glass I've used is three mil, and this tile's four, so sometimes you might get a little build up there, so just give that a clean off. Perfect. Ah, I think I'm liking it. So also around the wings here. It's mainly these sort of areas here. You can see there's a bit of a build up because the eyes are five mil thickness. So just a bit of a clean off. I'm still using the same cloth, <laughs> so I'm not doing too bad. Now I might actually just fold it in the other way. Same thing again, a few drops of water. And start on this side. Okay, so now we have to ensure we also clean off down the sides. So just a little bit of water on there. And I'm just going through, and it gives you a chance to check if you have any gaps. Uh, and also, once I finish this, I'm probably just going to paint the sides black. Because I don't know, I don't think it's a great idea. I see a lot of people when they seem to grout, put the grout on here. Realistically, when it dries, it's just going to flake off. So you're better off cleaning off the excess grout. As long as your gaps are filled in at the sides, and then just give it a nice coat of black paint. Seal the back of it, and then paint the back of it as well just to keep your work tidy. It's a bit messy. <laughs> Do one more wipe with a slightly damp cloth. Okay. Looking good. buff it with a dry cloth and now we can just begin to polish. Ah, oh, this looks good. Sometimes you have um, the glass, it'll have slightly indentations on top so you may get a little bit of build up or grout. You can get a little bit of um, 
water, mix with a little bit of white vinegar, just water down and you can go over it afterwards or even with a very soft toothbrush but sometimes it's really hard to get the grout out of the little indentations and then again it just adds a little bit of character to your work. I would leave it for the next day and then you can take to it with a slightly damp cloth, warm soapy water, run out and then just give it a really good buff up. That'll take out any extra um, surface grout that looks good. So that's it. Beautiful. Is that the right? It's gorgeous.